This video is in memory of Akira Toriyama. Hey everyone, like many of you have spent the last week or so reflecting on Toriyama's passing, his work and his legacy. The chief of which is the joy his stories brought to our lives, the communities and connections that were formed because of that, as well as the unquantifiable impact he had on anime and manga as a whole. On a personal level, Dragon Ball allowed me to bond with some of my best friends. My first foray into several of my favourite hobbies like cosplay was thanks to the series. And it was my gateway into the wider world of anime, having up until that point only seen Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! In short, without Dragon Ball, I would not be the person I am today, but we aren't here to talk about me. We're here to talk about Toriyama, a once in a lifetime talent who was able to create many compelling characters and arcs, a feat which is especially impressive when considering how often he was riding by the seat of his pants. However, not everything got to go his way, as due to outside interference, he often had to change his plans, with this being most obvious in the Android and Cell sagas, which were significantly altered mid arc on four notable occasions. So, as a tribute to Toriyama, I'm going to take a crack at guessing what his original Android saga might have looked like. If you have your own thoughts or suggestions on this topic, please leave them in the comments below, or make your own video on the subject, since part of what makes Dragon Ball so special is the strength and passion of its fan community. But with that said, let's get started. Starting off with what we know, and admittedly it is very little, it's that Android 19 and Dr. Jiro were intended to be the androids Trunks spoke of, who decimated his world, and the only villains he had planned for the arc. However, as we learned in Daisenshu 2, this was challenged by Kazuhiko Toroshima, Toriyama's then former editor, who called them just a geezer and a fatso, while also suggesting the designs were outdated and ridiculous, prompting Toriyama to create 17 and 18. They in turn were cast aside for Cell, though that is another matter, as due to the plan originally being for androids 19 and 20 to be the big bads, they will remain as such for the entirety of this hypothetical arc. As a result, the next step is to consider what sets these two androids apart, with their energy absorption being a big one, though they each also have a special trait, with 19's being his ability to take a beating, as evidenced by his fight with Goku, leading me to speculate that with his rotund body and seemingly innocent appearance blind great power, that he might have been a proto-Boo, and that some of Boo's stuff was recycled from 19, since Toriyama knew how to skillfully adapt stuff, especially if it made his job easier. As for Android 20 slash Dr. Jiro, his big point of difference is intelligence, since up until then, Goku had never faced off against a true genius opponent with the analytical abilities to counter Goku's physical ones, having mostly fought other martial artists, bungling fools, or at worst the occasional devious schema, like King Piccolo or Frieza. This would also play well into the overall theme of what became the Cell Saga, which is the hero's abilities and innate flaws coming back to haunt them, though this time it would be reflected through Jiro himself enacting his grudge against Goku and making him pay for his past crimes against the Red Ribbon Army. The other thing we know is that Toriyama wanted to hand the mantle of protagonist and Earth's defender to Gohan, as the Z portion of the story had been more his than Goku's when considering the actual manga and who it followed. As a result, this will also be the purpose of this arc, to facilitate a passing of the torch from Goku to Gohan, in a way that feels earned and pays off what had been set up to that point. With these parameters in mind, we can begin constructing the actual story. In terms of the opening of the arc, it will remain exactly the same, with Frieza and King Cole coming to Earth and Trunks decimating them, before warning of a threat even a Super Saiyan as strong as him couldn't beat, and of Goku's heart virus. He would then head back to the future, promising to return for the fight if he's still alive, ushering in the three year time skip. Following this, the Z fighters would assemble on the promised day and watch as 19 and 20 decimate Papaya Town, before leading them to a rocky wasteland for their battle, with Goku initially leading until 19 absorbs his Kamehameha, at which point the android would dominate as Goku succumbs to his heart virus. However, here is where I believe things would change, as while Vegeta would still appear as a Super Saiyan, it would not be the one-sided curb stomping it was in canon, as having absorbed Goku's power, 19 would fight on par with him, giving Vegeta a run for his money. During this fight, Vegeta would notice something odd about 19, as he'd begin exhibiting echoes of Goku's fighting style, especially the way he fought during the Saiyan invasion, with the android explaining that his data states that this style was able to defeat Vegeta once before, and with his projections of their power, the outcome is inevitable that it will do so again. Enraged by this, and determined to prove that a Saiyan's true potential is beyond math and quantification, Vegeta would push himself to his limits and beat on 19. However, he would not destroy him, with 20 instead calling for retreat, as they have insufficient data on this form, and insufficient power to defeat it, seeing both androids flee, with their undetectable energy making them impossible to track. 
What would follow would be the Z fighters unsuccessfully attempting to hunt down the androids and reuniting with Trunks, who would be perturbed by the subtle changes in the timeline, such as Goku's heart virus manifesting in a different time. It would also be during this time that Vegeta would learn of Trunks' identity, though it would do nothing to change his dislike of the lavender-haired young man. Meanwhile, 19 and 20 would return to the lab, with 20 repairing 19 and activating the incomplete prototype who he would dub Android 21, though who we all know as Android 16. He would then instruct 21 to destroy Goku's friends, while he and 19 prepare to kill Goku. This would result in a fight with 21, who would quickly overpower the Z fighters, including Vegeta and Trunks, the latter of whom would be horrified as this android never appeared in his time. 21 would be a brutal, taciturn opponent, with an unrelenting drive to kill mirroring the T-800 Terminator, as it is heavily speculated that the Terminator franchise was a major inspiration for this arc. Though in a Toriyama-esque way, this hulking killbot's demeanor would be contrasted by his quirky design, namely the bright red mohawk and lime green outfit. Thankfully, before he could kill anyone, we would be treated to the return of Goku, now healed up and stronger than ever, with him arriving just in time to save a terrified Gohan and defeat 21 once and for all. The team, aside from Vegeta who would go sulk about not being strong enough to beat the androids, and Trunks who would follow him, would then split up, as if this is the power of an incomplete android, a perfected one at full power must be something truly terrifying, with this time being used to lay the foundation of Gohan's need to tap into his own strength and not always rely on Goku, since the day will come when he is gone, though when that day comes, Goku has faith his son will be more than capable of taking up the mantle of protector of Earth. During this time, Piccolo would hear distant screaming with his sensitive hearing and therefore would be the one to stumble upon Ginger Town, which would be eerily deserted, aside from the piles of clothes and desk head skin sacks lining the street. Following the screams, he would soon come across 19 and 20, draining the life out of innocent humans, similar to what they did to Yamcha, with the ghastly trail of bodies being the end result of this process of the victims and saved as he was. Disgusted by this barbarity, Piccolo would prepare to fight, choosing 20 as his target, since he is clearly the brains of the operation and perhaps if he falls, 19 will be unable to act autonomously, leaving him vulnerable. Meanwhile, one of the humans, possibly Krillin, would deliver 21's body to Bullmed Capsule Corp for study on how to beat the androids, with her quickly discovering a radio frequency meant for receiving commands, which she would surmise must lead back to Dr. Giro's base of operations, and so would follow with Krillin's help. As expected, this would lead to the lab, with Bullman only discovering that Android 20 is in fact Dr. Giro himself transplanted into a cybernetic body, but also the schematics of their energy absorption device devices, with the belief that if given time, she can create a way to disable them, thus giving the heroes an edge to destroy the androids once and for all. Back with Piccolo, his fight would not be going well, as while he is a tactical fighter knowing better than to give Jiro any key attacks turn to power, it turns out the Doctor doesn't need them, as his recent absorption spree has put him far above Piccolo and likely even Goku. Not only that, but he also unveils his unique ability, similar to 19's possession of and ability to mimic all of the Z fighters' fighting styles, with that being that he has compiled the entirety of their techniques Techniques. He would then demonstrate with a special beam cannon that would strike Piccolo critically, leaving him near dead, while Jiro and 19 finish off the survivors and leave town, presuming the Namekian warrior could not have survived something like that. Broken and beaten, Piccolo would rush to warn the others, with this news setting a grim tone as no one is sure how to defeat the sinister cyborgs. Thankfully, Krillin would be able to tell them about Bulma's work building a device, though that would only allow them to use key attacks again. They would still need to become stronger in order to defeat their opponents, which would mean a lot more training, though that may not be an option as they're out of time. This mention of training and time would cause Goku to remember the hyperbolic time chamber, with him proposing they use that. After some discussion, it would be decided that Vegeta and Trunks should go in first, followed by Goku and Gohan, with the heroes making the grim choice in the meantime not to confront the androids and risk giving them more power, since while they have Dragon Balls, they can wish back anyone who is killed. This would weigh heavily on Gohan as someone who fights to protect others, with him growing impatient and wanting to at least try to intervene. Wisely, Goku would counsel him to wait, saying that he would get his chance to fight the androids, and that he believes the boy will be pivotal in turning the tide. But first they need to get stronger, which means waiting their turn and training in the time chamber. Finally, after what feels like an eternity, Vegeta and Trunks would emerge, seeing Goku and Gohan enter, while the former pair head off to find the androids, with Trunks only stopping long enough to receive his armor and the energy absorption dampener from from Bulma. Following the trail of destruction, the father and son pair would eventually track down Jiro and 19, with each splitting off to face one of them, with Vegeta choosing 19 for payback while Trunks battles Jiro. Thanks to not having their energy absorption anymore, the androids would quickly find themselves in the back foot, with Vegeta getting his cannon decimation of 19, bringing this nightmare one step closer to its end. However, with Vegeta being Vegeta, and Jiro being Jiro, nothing can be this easy, as using his keen mind, the Doctor would attempt to manipulate the Prince, informing him that he can absorb 19's body for a massive power boost, playing on Vegeta's ego and lust for a challenge. 
Trunks. Trunks obviously would try to stop this, using his status as Jiro's opponent to keep him from 19's body, but thanks to Jiro's honeyed words, Vegeta would side with the Doctor over his own son, resulting in the pair fighting as Jiro cannibalizes creation to transform into his ascended form, which since we have no idea what Toriyama would call something like that, we'll call Jiro 2.0 for argument's sake. Jiro 2.0 would then flex on the Saiyans, beating them mercilessly to break both their bodies and spirits as now he has all their techniques and fighting styles, as well as plenty of data on their new capabilities thanks to prolonging this fight, turning him into a perfect dark reflection of the team. The only downside for the Doctor is that due to Bulma's absorption dampener, he can't drain their life force for even more power, meaning he'll just have to settle for killing them. Thankfully, it would be around this time that Goku and Gohan emerge from the time chamber, and sensing their comrades rapidly dropping energy, they would instant transmission over, with this pleasing Jiro, as he's at last able to fight the target of his vengeance, Son Goku. Surprisingly, Goku would choose to fight with Gohan rather than on his own, putting his faith in the boy to watch his back, with this meaning the world to Gohan. However, due to caring very little for some brat, Jiro would focus most if not all his attention on Goku himself, with this being exactly what Goku wants, as having quickly gauged that even with his new training he cannot defeat Jiro 2.0, he would instead work towards helping Gohan bring out the hidden potential he has exhibited in the past. In the end, Goku would get his wish, though at a terrible cost, as in dealing a serious blow to the Doctor, the Saiyan would sustain a mortal wound in exchange, seeing him sacrifice his life once again, though not before using his dying words to express his complete and total trust in Gohan to finish what he started and defeat this monster. This loss would at last awaken Gohan's true power, a state beyond Super Saiyan, fueled by his hybrid potential and rage. In his hubris, Jiro would not see this for the threat it is, believing he has enough data to vanquish any Super Saiyan, though while this might be true for Goku or Vegeta, the same cannot be said for Gohan, the one he dismissed as a weak child and allowed to become a blind spot in his laser-focused desire to destroy the father. And so it is that this overconfidence is Jiro's death knell, with Gohan destroying him in the name of Goku and everyone else he hurt and killed. And just like that, the threat would be over, and all that would be left is the revival of everyone killed by the androids. Though here Goku would chime in from Otherworld, declining to be brought back, since this latest crisis is proof that he attracts villains, as Jiro's whole scheme came from a desire to kill him, for the sake of the Earth, he'll stay dead. Though honestly, he's not that worried, since if another threat does arise, they'll have Gohan, who is more than capable of serving as Earth's defender from now on. And that about wraps up my pitch for what Toriyama's original Android saga might have looked like. As you can see, a lot of broad strokes are the same due to Toriyama's gift for recycling concepts and adapting them, as well as drawing on other works, both his own and others, for inspiration. Also, this goes without saying, but this was very much a broad strokes overview. Were this a real arc, I imagine there'd be more fights and character interactions, but for the purpose of this tribute, and in an effort not to let my own ideas corrupt what is meant to be a speculation on what Toriyama would have done, I decided the best course of action would be to leave those areas blank and focus on the skeleton of the story. With that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching, give credit to this video's amazing sponsors, those being Normandy1998, Ash and Team Valor, and encourage you to let me know what you thought of this video. Do you think this is how Toriyama originally envisioned the arc? Was I way off base? And do you think the editorial meddling was for the better or worse in the end? Though, before I sign off, I do want to say one more thing. Thank you, Toriyama, for giving us such a rich and fascinating story to speculate on, even after all these years. You will be dearly missed.